EA puts Kaepernick back in the game, and Disney's Mulan ties itself to a human rights nightmare. I'm Jeff Beer, and this is Fast Company's brand hit and miss of the week. The miss this week goes to Disney. By all conventional measurements, the House of Mouse had a great week. Considering the success so far of its pandemic pivot for the theatrical release of its live action remake of Milan, downloads of Disney Plus spiked 68% over the weekend, and consumer spending in the app also jumped by 193%, tied directly to people paying 30 bucks to see the new film. But after all these happy subscribers shelled out 30 bucks and watched the movie, they saw something else. The company and studio thanks several Chinese government agencies in the credits, including the Xinjiang government's publicity department and the public security and tourism bureaus of the city of Turpen in that province. Why does that matter and who reads the credits anyway? Well, the US State Department estimates that as many as 2 million of the Muslim majority Uyghur people have been imprisoned in enormous internment camps in Xinjiang since 2015. The Turpan Public Security Bureau has also been listed by the U.S. government as an organization involved in, quote, human rights violations and abuses. The Chinese government has said that its vocational skills education and training centers in Xinjiang are lawful and have been necessary to fight terrorism and extremism. This all adds to a dark cloud that's hung over the film since last year when its star voiced support for Hong Kong police as they crack down on pro-democracy protesters. The Magic Kingdom isn't immune to the real world. Disney should know better than to thank, let alone even work with, governments and agencies that are associated with human rights abuses and genocide. But it's also a major hit to the supposed happiest brand on earth. This week's hit goes to EA Sports for putting Colin Kaepernick back in the game as a free agent for Madden 21. Kaepernick hasn't been in the game since Madden 17, which was released on August 23rd, 2016, nine days after he first took a knee during the national anthem. He's been essentially blacklisted by the league ever since that season. But over the last few months, as expanded Black Lives Matter and anti-racism protests have happened all around the country, and athletes have been speaking out more and more on the issue, things have changed. In June, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said the league was wrong not to listen to protesting players and that he would welcome a team signing the 32-year-old former star. Now, lo and behold, here's the biggest NFL video game on the planet, adding Cap to its roster. This is a great move and an undoubted brand hit, but it has to be said that it is long overdue. Kaepernick is an NFL star, so much so that EA Sports used him as one of the few names and faces to sell this very game back in 2013 and 2015. And yet, it still needed an unprecedented shift in the cultural conversation around police brutality and racism to find the corporate courage to make this move. It's not brave nor controversial, which is why they did it now instead of years ago, but it's still the right thing to do. Maybe if enough fans put cap on their team in the video game, enough real life NFL GMs will get the hint. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching.